Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is the 864th Rome Total War Brother game that I've put onto YouTube. Just to say, um, I'm mixing up old battles with new battles, and this battle was fought on the 3rd of January 2010. So this battle is over 14 years old, and it's a very rare 2v2 clan versus clan battle. Um, very rare to get a clan versus clan battle these days. Um, so I just thought it might be interesting for you to see this 2v2 clan versus clan battle and uh, during this battle you're going to see something unusual that uh, I'm pretty sure that none of you have seen before or a lot of you haven't seen before okay our first teammate is myself Spartan commander and I've got 14 infantry and 6 cavalry okay 14 infantry and 6 cavalry this is the Roman army I was bringing back in 2010. If you notice, I've got an eagle unit there for extra morale boosting abilities. And of course, my infantry general as well. So I've got two lots of morale going on in this army. And I'm guessing the upgrades of my cavalry probably, yeah, um, an experienced stripe gold shield gold attack there. So uh, that's my uh, 2010 Roman army. Be interesting to see how well it does during the course of this battle and our next teammate is brotherhood member of ff now ff has got 15 infantry and five cavalry okay 15 infantry and five cavalry for ff here and uh, as i say um very rare to have a 2v2 on our channel and there you are, I thought he'd have seven upgrades on his cavalry, an experienced strike gold shield gold attack on his cavalry there. It seems like um, we always used to have seven upgrades on our cavalry back in the day, whereas I think a lot of people just have gold shield gold attack cavalry these days. Should be a great one for you to watch. Okay, at this stage of the battle, I thought we'd have a look at our 2010 Roman battle formations here. And to be honest, look, can you see FS got three pilot shield units in front of his main battle formation do you think that's um a battle formation you'd see today doesn't look a lot different does it from what um you see roman battle formations from today really and bearing in mind this is 14 years ago that's pretty good and there's my battle formation from 14 years ago as you can see i've got three pilot shield units in front of my main battle formation as well so um <clears throat> as i say i just thought you might find it interesting to see what our Roman battle formations were like, um, you know, 14 years ago. And as I say, you can see I've got my Eagle unit and my General at the back of my battle formation there, keeping them out of the fighting, but giving the morale bonus to the troops all around them. So uh, there you are, there's our battle formation of 14 years And here is the other team. We have COH, Mr. Veni Vidi Vice. Um, COH stands for Crusaders of Hell, and Vini. Um, Vidi Vice in Latin means come see more. Now he's got 15 infantry and 5 cavalry. Okay, 15 infantry and 5 cavalry. And as I say, a little bit later on, you're going to see something unusual in this battle that uh, you don't see anymore. A quick look at the upgrades on his cavalry. I'm going to guess. Oh, okay, he's just got 6 upgrades. Um, gold shield, gold attack on his cavalry there. So as I say, COH stands for Crusaders of Hell. And our next teammate is COH Turkish. Now he has got 15 infantry and five cavalry there. So they both got the uh, the same cav um, army there, Roman army there. And there you already can see his general though is an eagle unit there. Can you see he's made his general an eagle unit? Remember the eagle units are not as tough as urban cohorts there. So, um, and I say, the uh, upgrades on his cavalry there are six upgrades so i think they've got pretty much um except for the eagle general for turkish they've got pretty much the same type of army there so um as i say there you are there's our uh, competitors should be a good one okay at this very very early stage of the battle here you'll see us both facing each other and approaching each other here as I say, it's uh, another um, old battle videos you've seen that I've shown you in the past. Very often, a lot of people used to think back in the day that whoever attacked first would lose. That was something that a lot of um, players, as I say, many, many years ago used to say that. Now, can you see this Julio player bringing his cavalry units forward? Okay. 
Now you might think, is he going to attack? But no, he's not going to attack. This is what we call a clan insult. All right, can you see why this would be a clan insult here to the Brotherhood? Okay, so this is an insult to both Eth Eth and myself and our Brotherhood clan. Can you see why it would be classed as an insult? Now, you don't see this anymore. You, you know, as I say, this is back in 2010. But this is, um, like we call it, the clan insult here. And can you see why? Okay, well, I'll explain to you what it is. Can you see here that he's brought his cavalry forward, then turned his cavalry facing the other way, showing us the horse um, bottoms here? Okay, this is an insult. Uh, this is meant to be an insult, showing you the horse bottoms. It means that we don't respect you we disrespect you um you and your clan this is going to be an easy battle um you know and and this is this is an insult to um our clan there now it's it's laughable now isn't it but back then you've got to remember there was lots of clans on rome total war and a lot of clans were always trying to beat other clans and then shouting about it in the lobby and one of the things they used to do was try and insult um, you know other clans there to try and make them angry um, and maybe make them make rash decisions in battle and this was uh, excuse the language I think this was called the horse arse insult um, but uh, of course I'll refer to it as a horse bottoms there so as I say this is meant to be a real insult to Eth Eth and myself and our brotherhood clan and it's supposed to make us angry and maybe make some rash decisions in battle Okay, as I say, you don't see this horse arse um, insult anymore on Rome Total War, um, but uh, it used to be um, not common, but it used to be done a reasonable amount um, back in the day there. And I just thought you might find that interesting. But uh, I'll guarantee that, I mean, I can't remember this battle, but I'll guarantee that Eth and myself probably just said LOL to that and won't give them any more um, reaction to the horse bottom insult. Um, and what we'll do now, we'll just try and play even better in battle um, to, um, you know, just to quietly show them that uh, even if they do insult us and our clan, we'll just keep calm and cool and just um, kind of give our reaction on the battlefield, if you see what I mean. So make no mistake, that is meant to be a provocative insult to Eth and myself. And I'll guarantee you that both Eth and myself kept cool and calm and we'll just take the reaction out on the battle. Okay, at this stage of the battle, you'll see that uh, both teams are closing in on each other here. And it'll be interesting to see which team is going to attack first. Looks like the uh, Julio General was looking to attack first and then decided to pull back there. But you can see I'm giving him a good robust um, Pyla um, hit there from my uh, Pyla Shield units. Now, as I say, both these um, COH guys seem to have roughly the same army. Well, pretty well, apart from the, uh, the Eagle unit for Turkish as his general, they've both got the same army. So it'll be interesting to see if they use the same tactics as well. You can see the Turkish here is putting the unit in Testudo in front of his uh, main Polish shield units there. Remember, in Testudo, they suffer a lot less casualties from missiles. And there you'll see um, Eth Eth moving his units forward. And you can see Turkish here moving that uh, Testudo unit. It looks like he's going to move it into the forward units of Eth there. But you can see a heck of a lot of pilot exchange going on there between Turkish, COH Turkish, and Eth there. You can see Eth attacking that uh, Testudo unit. And if you notice here, you'll see that um, Turkish has got his unit in Testudo at the front, and you'll see that uh, his teammate has also got a Testudo unit out the front as well. So I say this must be like uh, possibly a standard tactic that the COH team used at this time. There you are. Those of you that haven't seen a unit going into Testudo, here are, you can see this unit going into Testudo now. There you go. 
And remember this Testudo uh, formation here was used by the Romans back in the day and is a real battle formation the Romans used. If you notice there, they've got cover from missiles all the way around there, all the flanks, the front, and on top of them as well for you know any arrows or pilots coming in on top of them too. It's a very, very good defensive battle formation there. Um, I'm a little bit hesitant to throw pilots in because I know I'm not going to do a lot of damage to that um, unit in Testudo. Right, let's just uh, pause the game for a second here. So what I'm thinking here, this unit in Testudo looks a little bit exposed to me. Do you think that it's a little bit set out in front of his team? So what I'm thinking, what if I run my infantry forward, okay, to, uh, you know, over that unit and then charge my cavalry in to take that unit out? How about that as an idea to take that, uh, that Testudo unit out? That might be something that um, I used to do that back in the day with these Testudo units. It'll be interesting to see if I do that in this battle. Here you can see FF attacking that, uh, that forward unit of COH Turkish there. And you can see Turkish still throwing pilots into FF's forward units. As I say, I like uh, clan versus clan battles. I think that adds a little bit of spice, a little bit of edge to the battles, doesn't it? With uh, clan v clan battles, especially when an insult has been thrown at our, uh, ourselves and our brotherhood clan. Always adds a bit of spice to the battle, doesn't it? So you can see there, I'm moving my units over a little bit there. What I think I'm trying to do, I can't really remember this battle because it's from over 14 years ago, but... Uh, it looks to me like I might be trying to draw that Testudo unit forward a little bit more and then I can run my infantry through um, and then my cavalry. Maybe that's what I'm going to do there. You can see um, exchanging pilots there, but of course with me exchanging pilots, my pilots are just going to go into this Testudo unit. Can you see? And I'm not going to do a lot of damage to that Testudo unit there. You can see my pilots going in, but you can see that Testudo unit's hardly taking any casualties at all there. So really, that was kind of a bit of a waste of pilots there. Right, can you see I'm moving my cavalry forward? Right, can you see I'm rushing my infantry forward? I'm doing this old school surge attack there. Watch my cavalry come through my infantry here. Get ready for this and bang! Smash into that Testudo unit, routed it on impact with my cavalry. Now I need to pull my cavalry back out of there. I don't want to get pilots thrown into it and I can see the Julii cavalry were looking to counter attack there. So there you are, that is a classic um, takeout of a Testudo unit that got a little bit um, isolated there. And that's something that I used to do quite a lot of there with that tactic. Move your infantry forward, um, cover that Testudo unit in your infantry and then smash it with your cavalry. That's, uh, I was a little bit more aggressive in those days, I think. <laughs> when I watch these old battles, I think to myself, I, am, I was very aggressive then, I'm not so aggressive now. Um, but uh, of course, I didn't have quicker reactions in those days. I'm a little bit older now, so <laughs> a bit slower. Right, can you see here that uh, I've put this unit in open order to soak up pilots there? Remember, units in open order suffer less casualties from missiles there. So that's why I've put those units in open order. Meanwhile, over here, Eth is facing Turkish, and you can see Turkish has still got that unit in Testudo. Be interesting to see how Eth deals with that unit. But I'm just looking at the general disposition of the enemy Julii um, army in front of me. He looks aggressive, looking at the way he looks like he's got his finger on the trigger of his cavalry as well. Just look at that rain in pilers coming down onto my units there. That is a heck of a lot of pilers I'm taking there, but as I say, those units are in open order that are taking the pilers there. And as I say, just look at the general disposition of this uh, enemy Julii army in front of me. He looks like he's gonna be aggressive. Look how he's attacking the forward units of my uh, army there. Okay, he's got his cavalry locked and loaded, ready to charge in as well. Now you can see here that they've got their cavalry quite close together there. They could maybe do a joint attack on one of our armies there, but if you notice, both FF and myself have got our cavalry close together as well. So if the enemy does do a cavalry attack, we will counter with our cavalry as well and hopefully neutralize that cavalry attack. But here, as I say, you can see the enemy Julio infantry really pressing in on the forward units of my battle formation. There's an SBQR cavalry unit gonna smash in there like a bang as it charges in. Might route though, because he's a long way from his general there. 
and there's a lot of enemy troops around him. Yeah, there you go. He's routed there. His morale dropped like a stone because he was away from his general and he suffered casualties there. So, as I say, as I thought earlier here, the Julii general seemed to have his finger on the trigger. Looked like he was going to be very aggressive, and you can see that is exactly what he is being here. Very aggressive there. Wouldn't surprise me if um, this Julio General bought some units around the flank of my battle formation here. He's got a lot of spare units. If you notice, he's pinning and holding the forward units of my battle formation there. And as I say, he may well be looking to bring units around the flank of my battle formation. And look at the way he's moving his units there. Okay, you can see I'm sending in more reinforcements to kind of um, help uh, my forward units against the aggressive attack of the Julio General. Let's pause the game for a second here. So if you notice here, I'm keeping my Eagle unit and my General out of the battle there, but close enough to make sure I'm giving morale boost to my fighting troops there. Okay. And as I say here, looking at the general disposition of the enemy Julio General, it looks to me like he's going to do a flanking action here around my battle formation. Now I need to try and neutralize that movement there. If you notice here, I'm moving a couple of my Scipii infantry units over to try and help neutralize that flanking attack there. Okay, I'm gonna throw some pilots into them as well. Okay, so I say I've got two infantry units facing those um, four Julio infantry units there. FF just did a nice cavalry hit. Um, there to counter the SBQR cavalry that was coming in on my units. Nice bit of teamwork there by FF. Right, can you see these four Julio units have come around my flank? Do you notice anything about them at all? Okay, can you see they're in open order? Now, units in open order get smashed from the flank by cavalry can suffer massive casualties. Okay, so can you see I've got my cavalry locked and loaded? Probably going to go for the furthest julio unit and maybe even take out the julio general can you see he's actually put his julio general in harm's way there so what i'm looking to do is possibly hit him with infantry and cavalry okay you can see i'm throwing pilots into them now you can see i've definitely got my finger on the trigger of the cavalry right here comes the cavalry notice i've thrown infantry in first here comes my cavalry gonna smash in you can see the julio cavalry attacking me as well they see my cavalry going in bang the smash in there you can see the julio cavalry attacking my battle formation as well see ff coming in to support my infantry there like a bang and bang you can see sbqr cavalry being bought in there as well oh my gosh right good news for us we've taken out the julio general okay we've routed the julio general there so they've lost their general morale bonus there so that's good news as i say the julio general i thought was quite exposed there to a cavalry hit that's why i sent my cavalry and infantry in there as well great support here by f ethler there's SBQR Cavalry and Julio Cavalry trying to break my battle formation there. But I'm glad to say with FS help, my battle formation held. Make no mistake that those morale given units there, the Eagle unit and the General unit there, were giving morale boost to my infantry just when I needed it with those massive um, enemy attacks coming in on my um, battle formation there. And as I say, great support there by FS. You can see he's brought infantry across as well. So a uh, nice bit of support there. As I say, the enemy Julio General there struck me as the aggressive one out of two of them. And that's what it proved to be there. And there you are, you can see now, this is good news for FF and myself. We have now routed the aggressive Julio General. Okay, it's an uh, army there. So he has now gone, his general is uh, gone and um, his units are uh, all routed there so that's that's good news for ff and myself um, maybe the julio general there was a little bit uh, over aggressive there but uh, great support there as i say by ff there so um i always think you know like when a, a clan gives your clan an insult it uh, even though um you know at the time it's not very nice but it kind of um how can you say it it's it, uh, it kind of uh, fires you up um, on the battlefield a little bit, doesn't it? But uh, keeping cool and calm, but uh, making sure that you uh, you deliver good attacks 
onto an enemy that has insulted you and your clan. So there you are, you can see these uh, SBQR troops of Turkish, COH Turkish there, still throwing pilers into our units. But as you can see now, all of the enemy Julio troops have been chased down. Uh, the routers were chased down and they have now been routed and we are now up against COH Turkish here. Now whether he'll admit defeat or whether he's going to fight to the last man, I don't know. I would think myself that is now clan pride here and my guess is that he will fight um, to the last man, I would have thought, possibly, or till there's no chance of him uh, doing anything else to us there. So uh, clan pride in those days, very, very important there to fight on as long as you can. But of course, Eth, Eth and myself have still got our cavalry pretty well intact there. And if you notice, you'll see that I put my cavalry out on an angle on the flank there, ready to come in from an angle. And you can see Eth has got his cavalry um, facing him straight on there. So he may well charge directly into that uh, infantry. I'll have to keep an eye out for that. If he does that, I'll come in from the flank with my cavalry here. Okay, so as I say, you can see the way I've positioned my cavalry there, ready to come in from the flank if need be. And you can see FF looking, he looked, looked, he looked like he had his finger on the trigger there, didn't he? He looked like he was just going to go in and then decided to stop, or that he may well have just moved that cavalry into a, a more advantageous position there for what he's got planned. As you can see, FF being very aggressive. As I say, I lost a lot of my infantry in that aggressive attack from the enemy team. Here goes FF's cavalry, and bang, as he smashes in there. You'll see the enemy uh, Turkish there counter-attacking with his cavalry, but FF now has pulled his cavalry back. He didn't kind of um, carry on through with his cavalry charge there, but he's coming back again for another bite of the SBQR um, infantry there see that now I'm just holding my cavalry back at the moment probably waiting for what I consider to be the right time right here comes my cavalry in from that angle there gonna smash into those SBQR infantry get ready for this and bang and my cavalry smashes in there right pause the game for a second here so if you notice here FF there's a surge attack with his infantry when he sees my cavalry coming in and then my cavalry is gonna smash him from the flank there as his infantry charging. I'm charging my infantry in as well, although I'm keeping my Eagle unit and General unit at the back there. And you can see that FF here is keeping his General there as well um, to give morale bonus to his troops. And as I say, you can see my Eagle unit and my General unit there. I'm keeping out of the fray, but close enough to be giving morale boost to my uh, fighting troops there. So you can see, I think actually to be uh, to be fair to COH Turkish, I think he's holding really well here at the moment. You can see FS Cavalry charge in there, come bang, as that charges in. And as I say, a fair play to COH uh, Turkish there, holding really well against, um, you know, a double attack. I'm going to pull my cavalry back. I can see F is pulling his cavalry back. We're going to lock and load and charge straight back in again. If you notice here, I'm going to move my cavalry round on a more, um, if you like, a different angle there. And I'm going to come in from, uh, you know, into the rear. And what I'm going to do is go for the uh, furthest SBQR unit there with FS Cavalry. And as I say, you can see the cavalry charging in there. And this could be the final moments of the enemy um, COH team there as our cavalry smashes in there like a bang. And there you go. You can see there that we've now, um, and Turkish has just admitted defeat, I think, there. So uh, well done to FF. Over here, you can see this is where we hit that uh, that uh, Julii enemy Julii um, army there. Routed all their units, chased down the routers there. You can see them all leaving the battlefield at the rear there. And of course, then that just left um, COH Turkish there against FF and my armies. So um, I think we did um, <clears throat> we did quite well there. I always think to myself, you know, if you're going to insult a couple of players and their clan, um, you're going to expect um, kind of a reaction on the battlefield, aren't you? And um, unfortunately for them, the reaction that Eth, Eth and myself gave them was um, maybe uh, unexpected for them there.
Right, <clears throat> the first thing I'd like to say is really well played to everybody in the game. Really well played everybody there. I thought uh, everybody played uh, really well. And you can see it was a clear victory for the Brotherhood clan there. So well done to F. F. Um, he, d he played really well there, so uh, a great battle. And you can see the highest kills in the game actually does go to Brotherhood member F. F. there. Got some really good kills, so well done to him. Great play all the way through that battle. Well done to COH Turkish. He got less than a thousand kills, so he'll be a little bit um, disappointed by that probably. And COH Veni Vidi Vice that actually gave us the horse bottom insult. Uh, he got a lot less than a thousand kills, so he'll probably be a bit disappointed from that as well. <clears throat> there. So um, I just hope you enjoyed this 2v2 clan battle. My kills are yeah, not too bad. Um, I don't think my kills were too bad there, but as I say, FF got the highest kills in the game. I thought he played it really well there. So well done to FF. As I say, it's very rare for me to put a 2v2 battle on our channel, um, and especially a 2v2 battle from 14 years ago. And um, I just thought that that um, clan insult that you saw there, you used to see clan insults like that quite a bit in those old days where uh, one clan was trying to provoke another one to be angry. Okay, Spark Commander saying bye for now and see you soon.